I'm an actuary. Yeah. Huh. What about you? Uh, I have tested directly in the center of the spectrum. Oh, interesting. Every time in my life, I've been a little bit over here and a little bit over there. Right. So go extrovert for a while, and then I've run out of juice, and I have to go be an introvert for right. a few days. Right. <laughs> right. It's so restock. Yeah. By yourself. Yeah. Uh, I could talk to people. I can do this show. I was in sales for a while. So it's mm. <laughs> not, a, not a shrinking violence. You have that side. <laughs> yeah. You have that side. Right. But a uh, nice afternoon, just being a manuscript. Oh, that's heaven. Yeah. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. I've always been a reader too. And that is obviously, we think of that as being a more introverted um, thing. And I mean, I think it is. It's you in the book, you know? So, well, I mean, if you, I don't know, join a book club or run out and talk to the people yeah, that uh, talk to people you just read their book. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess I do think the experience of reading is really a, so, you know, that's a solitary thing. You and the story, you and the characters together. Mm-hmm. Although maybe it is like talking with the characters and being with people in that way. I don't know. I've never thought about that before. <laughs> They're like middle grade books, uh, especially if you're reading to students or you're just present while it's being read to students. That's very much a communal activity. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Uh, that's... Totally different experience. I especially appreciated it when I was a kid and I knew I wasn't reading it quite the way it was meant to be read. So if I had some adult who understood a little mm-hmm. more reading it mm-hmm. correctly, especially if it was a book I'd already read and then I could hear them read it like, oh, okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. Now. Yeah. I, um, I also have very fond memories of having a librarian read aloud to, um, I went to a new school starting in fifth grade. I went to a fifth to eighth grade school and um, the librarian read out loud to us all, all through the whole time up through eighth grade. And I loved that. And when I was a librarian for a brief, very brief period, I also, I read out loud a lot. I love, I loved it so much as a kid. I wanted to do that for the kids. You know, it's just a great, I love it. Well, I feel like this should just be the start of the show because uh, we, yeah. we started right at that. Uh, already right in there. <laughs> let's do this. Yeah. Um, so I know at what, 13, you got your first job in a bookstore at the Cheshire Cat. Is that right? True. True. That's right. My, my, <laughs> if, it's funny because you, you know, Rob, you had sent, um, a list of some of the questions that you might ask, you know, and you would let me know that we'd, we'd probably start here with like a little bit about the background. And I was thinking so many of my friends, we have a joke, whenever you ask a question, you, we all have to begin with like, well, first I was born then, <laughs> but so I'm not going quite that far back, but as you point out, I'm going to go back to age 13. Um, uh, but just briefly there and then moving much more quickly to, um, to something a little more current than, than me being 13. But yeah, I grew up in a neighborhood in Washington, D.C., where there's one of the first children's only bookstores in the country. This was in the this would have been in the 70s, the late 70s, uh, I think, or the early 80s. Anyway, um, Cheshire Cat Bookstore. And so I worked there. I had a little job there after school stocking the shelves. Um, and then, you know, fast forward many years to graduation from college. And I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, found myself working in a Borders um, bookstore. And then I saw a lot of authors came through that Borders on book tour. And I thought, and they would come with their publicists from New York. And it just looked very exciting. And the publicists were always like these sharply dressed people. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's, I need to get to New York and do that. So I had friends living in New York. I moved to New York and I moved in with them got a job in publishing and worked, and then eventually worked my way into um, children's books um, and doing marketing for children's books. Um, And loved that for many years. Then I started to think I wanted to find a way to get a little bit closer to the book. You know, marketing, you are coming in kind of at the end of the process. The book is already acquired and edited and ready to go. And I had always been, my whole life, a very passionate reader. That's why I got the job at the Cheshire Cat um, in the first place, because they knew me as a as a kid who would come to shop there. Um, and um, so I left um, publishing, got a degree in library science, 
worked in libraries for a couple of years. I worked at a branch of the Brooklyn Public Library and in a girls um, school. <clears throat> and then I went back to Penguin where I had been for a while and was the library marketing director. Um, during that time, I sort of took on two hats and acquired just a few projects at Dutton Children's Books. So I was sort of doing, I still was the library director, but I was also acquiring a couple projects and working with the publisher of Dutton Books at that time. And then, um, and then I moved over to Holt. Um, Henry Holt Books for Young Readers, where I was managing the whole marketing department, so overseeing library marketing, but also um, trade and publicity and online and the whole the whole group. And then um, Holt was a smaller publisher, so it was not vastly more people that I was managing, but all the channels. And then um, and then I had my two kids, and I was thinking it was time for a change. Um, and um, I had had in the back of my head for a long time, agenting could be um, a really good fit for me. And what I love about it, and so now I've been agenting for, I think just over 10 years. And what I love about it is um, that you get to wear so many different hats. Um, there's a little bit of sales, there's a little bit of marketing, there's editing, there's just uh, letting me indulge who I am as a reader. Um, it's working very closely with creative people, which I love. Um, so lots of things about it that I love, but I feel like it, it is, it is the perfect way to put all those, you know, a little bit of libraries some bookstores, some publishing, it kind of all those things come into it really nicely. I feel like, so that's well, a bit about me. The, the story of your birth, so I want to make sure we got my dog teasing. Uh, <laughs> you missed a part uh, there. So I, I, I'm assuming Cheshire Books isn't just hiring every 13 year old they see. Um, <laughs> they, they must have made a special exception for you. Well, you, you know what? Actually, they so it was such a special place. It really, it really was such a special place. The Cheshire Cat Bookstore was opened by a a group of women who were they had all worked together at a really lovely school in Washington, DC. It was, it's a private, I don't know what, I can't remember what it was. It was a private school. And some of them had been classroom teachers and two of them were librarians for the school. And so they, they, they were the core group of the women who ran the store and they, they hired, they always hired, um, junior high school and high school students to, to restock the shelves because they had always worked with kids and they knew kids and they loved kids. And that's why they wanted to open a children's only bookstore. I literally lived two, bo two blocks from the store and my orthodontist was upstairs. So for years before I was hired, I would go to the orthodontist and then I would go to Baskin Robbins, which was two doors down. And then I would go to the bookstore. And that was like my pick me up after going to the orthodontist, I would go have an ice cream and buy a new book. But I remember waiting, even before that, I remember waiting online for a book signing with Judy Bloom online that wrapped all around the block. I remember seeing um, Daniel Pinkwater there. Like I, I, I grew up in that store. So they did know me. It wasn't like totally random that, that they hired me um, at that store. This is a special place. A really special place. So you're obviously a, a book enthusiast uh, from a young oh, age. Totally. Uh, did you ever think about maybe you wanted to be a writer, or what was it about publicists specifically that said, "Oh, that's that. That's the way." That, oh, that's the way for me. I think that was a 21 year old brain that thought publicist. Honestly, it seemed glamorous. <laughs> that's what, that's what I. That's what that was about. Um, I, you know, I then later did do some publicity. Um, I never was a full publicist but you you know in marketing sometimes you wear a couple different hats and publicity that is a hard job and I would not be a great publicist actually um but um which doesn't mean I can't you know send out great cheer for my clients books but um the real work of being a real publicist is is that's hard um but anyway um I um I forgot what your question was Rob I started talking. I well, got I'm off on the side. Uh, why of all the things you could do in publishing was it always just like I'm looking to get into books and oh, there's publicity. That's my way in. Or 
Well, it was more Mark. I mean, I think, as I say, I think I had, I had this sort of glamorous idea of what it might be, what it might be like, but I, but I did know that books was a place I wanted to be. Um, I, I know there are a lot of kids who, and I guess maybe even more so now, because I think kids' lives are so different and there's a lot more pressure on them than there was on me. I graduated from college in 1986 and I didn't know what I was going to do. And I remember on the drive home from school, my dad said to me, oh, you know, there's a new bookstore that opened. It's really cool. It's big, lots of books. That was a Borders. Um, and, and he was like, I think you should get me, you know, maybe you'll go there and see if you get a job there. Just something we were thinking of it as like, just something for the summer. Um, and, um, so I did that and I got the, you know, it's not, wasn't super hard to get that job, but I got that job and, um, books, books have just always been a, um, a home place for me. I don't know how else to say it. You know, I really did. My mother was a massive reader. I I have so many memories of books from my childhood. I have so many memories of um, bringing like a big LL bean bag to the library with my sister and lugging that home and then going to this bookstore, as I say, it's just always been a center in my life. And so I think when, when I graduated from college and was thinking, well, well, and then 